Namaskaram, welcome to my channel VPK Nutrition Mind Body Healing with Pushpa. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about sweet and sweet cravings. And a lot of people have these, and a lot of people say, Oh, I have a sweet tooth, I can't control it. So I'm going to be talking more about that, what causes this, and also give you some tips on how to help yourself. So stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank, thank all my viewers who have been watching regularly and sharing their feedback. Uh, hopefully whatever I'm sharing is helpful. Uh, so for those who haven't already done so, please do subscribe to my channel and also uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it and then share with your friends and family so others can be benefited as well. So let's begin the today's topic. So let's begin with our understanding of what sweet is. Now again, in the Western world, we know what sweet is usually the taste that you feel in your tongue when you've eaten something sweet like sugar or sugary foods or desserts and so on and so forth. So it's basically a feeling that you get. And again, this is because of the taste buds that give you that taste. Now in Ayurvedic uh, definition of sweet, it's a lot more uh, involved. So first of all, sweet is called a madura, a madura rasa. Rasa is the word we use for taste loosely. However, rasa also has two meanings. One of the meaning is it's a juice. So it could be like a um, fruit, fruit juice can be considered to be rasa also. However, the other meaning is rasa means essence. So essence of something or the inherent nature of something. For example, sweet is the essential nature of sugar. Uh, spiciness is the essential nature of uh, uh, green pepper, you know, things like that. So uh, we also look at these different substances as uh, everything in the world is uh, made up of the five great elements. So the sweet is also, or the taste is also made up of the uh, five elements with two elements which are dominant. Again, I've talked in detail about the six tastes and all of this uh, in another older video and I will share the link in the description if you want to learn more about it. For today's purpose, I just want to say that the sweet taste is dominant in two elements, which is earth and water. So earth gives it the nourishing quality or the grounding quality. So it's heaviness of the food comes from that earth element. And then the water gives it the moisture. Now anything with moisture is also more enjoyable in the mouth. So again, so because of these two uh, elements being dominant and the characteristics of these elements, it gives you nourishment to the body. That is a main function of sweet foods. Now, according to Ayurveda, 80% of the foods that we consume are considered to be sweet in taste. However, some of them can have other tastes as well. And then of course, you can also modify the sweet by adding spices and things like that. So even meat and dairy products are considered to be sweet taste. And uh, although they don't taste sweet in the mouth, they have the properties of a sweet food with the earth and the water element and making it very heavy for the body to digest. That's why they recommend eating less of those things if you don't want to gain a lot of weight. So basically, this is the understanding of sweet in Ayurveda or Madhura Rasa. Now, when we eat regularly, people have cravings. For example, pregnancy, people have cravings for certain things. Those are considered to be normal because it is part of pregnancy and maybe you know instigated by the baby and so on. However, it becomes a problem or a sweet craving uh, when becomes a problem when it when it goes on excess. So, what is the difference between sweet craving and uh, sweet addiction? Sweet craving is an intense desire to have a certain food. So when you have this craving, you want to go get it. Like, oh, I feel like eating something sweet. You want to get some dessert or ice cream or whatever. That's a craving. Now, again, this can happen intermittently and then you might satisfy that craving on and off and that's fine. However, when this becomes more of an addiction, when you keep on doing this a lot, and again, eating too many sweets also uh, causes a lot of problem with digestion in the body and makes it very sluggish. Now remember, the earth and water elements increase the kapha in the body. Kapha is a, um, the third um, dosha, and when you increase this kapha in the body, it causes heaviness and weight gain and all of those things. And so again, um, we'll talk a little bit more about this when I talk about causes. So that's basically the difference between a sweet craving and a sweet addiction. So in today's video, I'm going to be focusing more on the sweet cravings which people suffer from and give you some tips on how to um, get, get over that craving. So let's look at some causes uh, from the modern medicine perspective. So I'm going to list them one by one and then kind of just um, go through some research studies during, the, uh, during this process. 
So number one cause could be a nutritional deficiency like magnesium. Um, number two uh, could be eating sweets because you're bored um, or watching TV or something like that. Number three can be self-imposed food restrictions. So if you've been kind of starving yourself from some sweets, eating sweets or whatever, then you start having cravings because of that. Number four is out of habit. A lot of people eat sugar or sweets, desserts out of habit. I mean, it's culturally also we say, okay, we want to eat dessert at the end of the meal and usually not with the meal, but like an hour after the meal. Again, when you eat sweets, it increases insulin in the body to digest that. And then you, then this uh, this process, again, when the insulin it goes up and then the sugar crashes, then you're craving more sweets. So this is why it's not a good idea to eat uh, dessert by itself, especially after about an hour after the meals. Number five, research also shows that uh, the hormone ghrelin, which is the appetite stimulant, is also increased when you eat sugars. And this again further increases the craving for sweets. Number six, uh, artificial sweeteners, which are usually very sweet, like much sweeter than an actual actual sugar, uh, changes the person's uh, preference for sugar and in fact changes the palate so they crave more sugars. Now again, study has been done on this and I'm going to just go through what they found out in the study. In one small 2015 study done in California, researchers tracked the desire for sweets in a group of 20 people uh, who gave up all sweeteners, both caloric and non-caloric sweeteners for about two weeks. Now, after the two weeks, they found that 86.6% of them reported that they no longer had sweet cravings, sugar cravings. So this, again, there were also other results and I've shared the study in the description if you want to go read more details about this. The important thing to remember from this is sugar is more of a habit or something that you're used to. It gives something and you keep eating it. But once you stop eating it for, you know, forcibly like this, you realize that you really don't need that much of sugar. It's just like salt. You don't need that much of sugar to eat. And then you actually f uh, find that other foods also start tasting much sweeter when you have uh, kind of taken that sweet fast challenge. Number seven, um, stress also can um, increase our sweet cravings by secreting certain hormones. There were a couple of studies uh, which talked about one of them about ghrelin and one about cortisol and I'm just going to give you what those studies said as well. A 2016 study showed that the appetite stimulant hormone ghrelin increased with stress leading to sugar cravings. In 2019, a study was done on the stress hormone cortisol showing a link to the desire for sweet foods. Number eight, Lack of sleep can also lead to uh, cravings, especially sweet foods. A 2013 study showed that people who don't get enough sleep tend to crave foods that are sweet, salty, starchy, which is uh, again generally ultra processed junk foods or fast foods. And this may be because they like to boost their energy levels using these kinds of foods because it, sugar gives an immediate burst of energy. A 2017 research review showed that sugary foods can interfere with the quality of your sleep as well. And that study is shared in the link. And we see this a lot in adolescents as well. We know as adolescents don't really sleep on time. And I talked about sleep in the last episode, uh, how that uh, staying up late at night, the pitta time actually increases your craving for food. And especially we reach for sugary snacks and fatty foods because that's what really fulfills you when your agni is really high. So again, um, they are also stressed out a lot because of the screens and uh, screen time, not getting enough sleep and anxiety, depression, all of these things kind of add to that craving for sweets as well. Number nine is emotional eating. Again, we say the stressed spelled backwards is desserts. You might've heard that. So definitely when you're feeling very emotional, or you're feeling sad or tired or uh, depressed uh, or even sometimes angry, we always reach for sweet foods because that gives us that grounding and calms us down quite a bit. So it's very dangerous to eat when you're emotional because you end up gaining weight in the long run. So this is something to watch out for. Let's try to relate the causes in modern medicine with the Ayurvedic causes. As we know, there are three doshas, Vata, Pitta and Kapha, and each of them have their own characteristics. Number one, if you take the Vata, 
when the vata is imbalanced in the body which is usually caused by working too much not taking any breaks you get so exhausted that you need something to nourish yourself which is usually sweet which gives you that nourishment so you always crave for sweet and salty foods at that point and again a lot of the junk food is that kind of food uh, or you're you're not getting enough of sleep so a lot of anxiety and uh, fear and nervousness that can lead to cravings uh, being overstimulated you know looking at the screens and social media and these kinds of things can also lead to that and also uh, doing too much exercise uh, especially vatas have to be active all the time this also can increase their uh, vata so much or aggravate vata which can lead to sweet cravings now number 2 in the pitta individual pittas usually tend to eat a lot of uh, heavy uh, spicy foods spicy fermented foods and things like that that can cause a lot of acidity in the stomach or hyperacidity and again they reach for sweets to cool them down and so that can also cause so luckily the sweet pacifies pitta but again you don't want to make it a habit because again you will lead to a health gain i mean a weight gain the third uh, dosha kapha dosha again is even uh, generally kapas are a little bit on the overweight side and they also love sweets they love to eat sweets that's just their nature because they are already earth and water dominant so they crave the same kind of foods in their diet so when when they eat too much of sugar um they become very sluggish they don't move and then you're not moving very sluggish and then sometimes they also have attachment issues they're you know attached to people so they don't feel love within themselves they reach for food for eating and this is again more emotional eating and the more sluggish you are and more slow the agni um you also again crave sweets so again this is like a vicious cycle because and they're not able to get out of it so again every dosha type has to look at what is the main problem and see what kind of things that can help them to get out of this sugar craving and live healthy and energetic so now that we've learned all about the causes according to modern medicine and ayurveda i looked at a couple of studies that talk about the hormone imbalance and all of that what are the solutions what are some things that we can do to control these sugar cravings right so number 1 um eat all six days in a meal which includes the sugar so i mean sweet sour salty pungent bitter and astringent again i've talked about six days of ayurveda i'll share the link in the description so if you are ayurvedic healthy plate includes all six days now again depending on your dosha type the proportion might vary but you still have to have all six days in your food and not only that ayurveda always says eat the sweet taste first so when you agni when you're hungry and your agni is burning and your actually digestive fire is ready to cook that's when you eat the sweet food what do we do we eat dessert at the end of the meal which which is after you already eaten so many other things you really cannot digest it so it's better to eat your dessert first or or even sweet foods like rice if you're eating or the pasta the carbohydrates all of those things should be eaten first and then you end with an astringent taste so that the saliva is uh, sucked out and then you don't have any cravings Number 2 get your sweet from whole grains fruits and vegetables and not so much from simple sugars Number 3 like i said end with an astringent taste and so this is a custom in india people chew on palm leaves which are supposed to be astringent and and kind of get rid of that saliva in the mouth and or even fennel seeds uh you chew on them not with the sugar but by itself then that also helps to Uh, with the digestion as well as not create any cravings after you eat your meal number 4 if you're drinking coffee or tea uh try to use regular sugar like raw sugar sugar in the raw uh so that the natural product is better recognized by our body than all of these artificial sweeteners again if you have a diabetes or something you take a smaller quantity and you know maybe slowly you can even wean off of those things if you don't need it Number 5 is avoid artificial sweeteners and again not just you know adding splenda or equal or whatever you put in your coffee but also look at the labels if you're buying some packaged foods if they have some of these sweeteners and I'm going to go through the list over here uh, as you can see in this list these include sucrose corn syrup agave dextrose grape sugar brown sugar date sugar high fructose corn syrup maple syrup Uh, evaporated cane juice coconut palm sugar turbindo sugar powdered sugar honey molasses barley malt cane sugar raw sugar and brown syrup
rice syrup. As you can see, there are so many of these sweeteners in a lot of the processed foods. Of course, you want to avoid ultra process as much as possible. And I've done a video on ultra process. You can go back and watch that if you like. But again, um, you, when they're ultra processed like that, they are more absorbed to the, in the body and cause a lot of problems. So definitely you want to read the labels anytime you buy something at the store. Number six is eat healthy uh, snacks. Uh, again, keep like even if you want cr uh, cr sweet cravings, you can keep some carrots uh, or even eat a little bit of sweet potatoes. Again, you can put some salt and pepper in there to balance the sugar out and eat that instead of eating sugary snacks. Number seven, do uh, regular exercise. I mean, walking is a great exercise because this helps to um, balance the hormones in the body and also relieves a lot of stress. So even if you can do, and also increases metabolism. So if you can do 10 to 15 minutes with every meal, that would be a great thing, or at least a couple of times a day, this will actually give you a lot of prana and you will not be craving so much of sugar. Number eight, uh, make sure you get proper sleep again sleep at the right time before 10 11 o'clock before that peak pitta hits and you're craving all these desserts um, again watch my uh, video on sleep and i've talked about circadian rhythms and how to um, have our activities during the day based on that and eating also based on that number nine uh, eat your dessert first i mean eat if you're eating dessert eat it with your meals or at least when you're eating more protein and fat so it will kind of decrease the glycemic load so your sugar won't go up at the same time it will not increase your cravings later on so even if you eat dessert eat it with your meal number 10 ask yourself if you really need that dessert after you've eaten a meal don't eat it because of habit and again avoid eating mindlessly you know watching tv or out of habit of any other kind Number 11, again, yoga asanas and pranayama go a long way in getting rid of a lot of these vasanas, as we call them, inherent tendencies or habits that we've developed, impressions that we have in us. Even emotional stuff can come out when you do pranayama. Uh, and this way, you're not eating it because of the wrong reason. The cravings are not because of the wrong reasons. Number 12 is you can do the two-week sugar-free challenge. Again, I've shared the steps for that in the description if you wanted to do that it's based on that study that i shared uh, so if you want to try to get off all sugar and sugary drinks and sweets and everything for the next two weeks and then experiment on yourself how you feel you might even lose a little bit of weight um, so try that if you'd like to do that and then maybe uh, after two weeks you can see what the results are and you might actually um, not need that much sugar or you may actually get rid of your sugar cravings again the best way to know is actually try it so again these are about 12 tips that i've shared uh, pick whatever appeals to you whatever works for you and then try to follow those as much as you can um, and then over a period again give yourself a couple of months you know immediately things are not going to change give yourself some time for changes to happen in the body and the body and mind will start adapting and um so that's it for today. Uh, so listen to your body, observe your mind and heal yourself uh, and hope you found all of this information helpful. I will see you again in a couple of weeks with a new episode. So have a wonderful week ahead.